This decision from Hamas, uh, is this a very serious setback for Israel and the, and the release of these 100-plus hostages? I imagine it is somewhat of a setback. Not necessarily, because in many ways, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces was implying this in the run-up to the previous pauses. Uh, it's a kind of negotiating ploy. But the suspicion is that it would be possible to get a, an easing sufficient to get some hostages released, but by no means all, a, a kind of bottom line. Uh, the Israelis will be absolutely uh, certain that they will not release hostages who are members of the Israeli Defense Forces, quite a number of whom were actually captured back on the terrible day on the 7th of October. So to that extent, this is slight progress, but one senses behind the scenes quite a lot is going on. But it may be that even if we get a very watered down uh, resolution going through the United Nations Security Council, that might be enough to open up space for some progress. But I think we're probably talking about 10, maybe 20 people, not more than that. So it's not all bad news in that sense, but we're still in an extremely difficult position. Yeah, because what, what they've put on the table, you know, Israel can't accept, they can't say we'll, we'll end the war. When Hamas say, um, you know, we won't talk about any more hostages until the war has ended, what, what do they actually mean, that Israel just ceases all of its action immediately? Well, the point is, as far as Israel is concerned, it can win this war, to use its own phraseology, this is the phraseology of Netanyahu, uh, if it actually succeeds in completely crushing Hamas. Uh, and that means basically uh, carrying on this war so that you don't get too much left of Gaza. Because the problem is that Hamas, in its various forms, remember there are civil sections, there are military sections, uh, is very much involved in Gaza as a whole. So Israel, in that sense, cannot win in terms of what it claims it's trying to do. Hamas also can't win in the sense there's no way that it's going to bring the destruction of Israel. Uh, this can only end in talks, but it's extremely difficult because obviously with all the killing on both sides, but starting with the, the massacre of the 7th of October, you're actually getting a situation where people are absolutely entrenched. And to that extent, I think you've got to have outside people trying to exert more influence than I'm afraid is happening at the present time. Mm. And, and, and so where does this leave the two parties in this because for Israel what's the end point they are determined to carry on they're talking about more incursions in the south of Gaza meanwhile the international community very much changing its tune the language is definitely changing from the UK from the US particularly it is and I mean if that's the language of the two leading supporters of Israel the United States primarily but to an extent uh, the British government, because you have support both from the government and also the main opposition party. As long as you have that kind of situation, uh, then the Israelis will feel that they can carry on. But that is changing, as you're right. I mean, the real risk to Israel, sadly, is it ends up being something of a pariah state. Uh, I mean, you've had, what, over 20,000 people killed and probably another three or 4,000 people who are actually unaccounted for, they're buried in the rubble. You've had, what, 55,000 people wounded. And you're getting, I mean, the United Nations is now saying that there is famine likely in Gaza. Now, this is a, a famine which is a direct result of the war. But it's a direct result of the uh, sort of the limited amount of aid that Israel is allowing through. Now, I think the real risk that is Israel is actually going to lose out on this indirectly. Uh, at the final analysis, there's no way we can get through this in a few minutes. But you have to get to a situation where the sides are prepared to talk. Now, getting talking between a group like Hamas and the Israeli government under the current government would be almost impossible, be extremely difficult. Things can change, and my personal view is that has to start with some sort of ceasefire uh, of as long duration as possible. Uh, I mean, the situation now with what is happening in Gaza is almost unbelievable, and we're seeing it sort of every night on the television. But that has a long-term impact. It has an impact on international opinion and on the views of people right across the world where, as I say, the support for the Palestinians has gone up by leaps and bounds in the last eight to ten weeks. Indeed. I think, I think we're seeing a real change in tone from the international community, yes. as, you, as you rightly say there. Professor Paul Rogers, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.